Hi, welcome to Pennsylvania Newsmakers, and as always, thanks for watching. Well, higher education in a tight fiscal situation, and we continue our series on Governor-elect Tom Corbett today, the governor, and what we might expect on energy, Pennsylvania politics, and government in depth and in detail. And guess what? It all starts right now. This is Pennsylvania Newsmakers, a fast-paced, unrehearsed weekly discussion with and about the leaders who shape your world. And now, here's your host, Terry Madonna. Hi, welcome back to the program. Well, we're going to uh, uh, range into a bunch of uh, policy discussions. As we mentioned earlier, the campaign is over. Politics, ah, you can't quite get away from it, but we're now going to get into some substantive discussions about the big policy issues that confront the state. Higher education is the topic of the day. Uh, sitting across from me is Gary Dent. He's the vice chancellor for human relations, <clears throat> human resources, and labor relations with our friends from the state system of higher education. Gary Dent, welcome to the program. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Hey, you, you uh, joined the state system about 16 months ago, right? And what, did, what were you doing before then? Uh, prior to that, I was uh, at the University of Cincinnati. Okay. So I've had a career in higher education, in the public sector, and also right. uh, the private sector. Okay, cool. Now look, I, I think everybody understands that this is an age of tight fiscal resources. Uh, public uh, funding for higher education has been, you know, flat, maybe a little gain. Doesn't look promising in the future, too promising in the future. What is the fiscal situation that you think confronts the state system? I mean, you, you educate over 100,000 students. You're in 14 big locations, and then obviously you have saddle, you're the largest <clears throat> education system in the state. Talk a little bit about, first of all, the, what, what, what the fiscal situation is like. And, and narrow, go, talk about the students. Well, our, our focus is on student success and um, making sure that our students, when they come to us, that they have a pathway uh, to success in graduation. So our, our goal is to keep tuition uh, as low as we can but also provide the best possible education through faculty and staff for our students. Mm -hmm. Well, what, look, in this fiscal environment, I mean, as you look around, there, everybody's talking about slash, cut, reduce, eliminate. These are all kind of popular verbs right now. Most of them are verbs. And it, do you think it's going to get any better in the short run, or, or are you at the state system having to live with sort of what I'd call a new fiscal reality? Well, I think we do have to live with a new fiscal reality. You know, it's important for us to keep a, a system that's viable. Right. Uh, and as we think about viability, it does mean that we have to look at cost in every uh, mm -hmm. aspect of our business. And when I say business, uh, the financial sure. part of our organization, the academic part of our organization, we have to look at all of those for uh, flexibility, ways we can collaborate, mm -hmm. ways that we can be creative in providing uh, education to our students. Mm -hmm. Now that would increase, I mean, I, I would suspect that you're still going to articulate and make the case as you historically have done before the state led. I mean, you're not going to lie down, you're going to go and put oh. a lot of pressure, which we would expect you to do, right? The well, I think yes, because we, we believe that we have to provide the new yeah. workforce for the state. Yep. And uh, as we, we think about our state, we do have unemployment issues. We have new realities that uh, jobs are changing, and we need citizens who can uh, deliver the services uh, to the state that's required sure. going forward. And one of the points that I think over the years we've made at the state system schools are in, you know, many of them are in rural communities where the state system is a huge employer, right? I mean, that's you, right. You, you matter. The state system schools really matter for the economic viability of a lot of regions of the state in rural areas where, as you know, unemployment tends to be a little higher, where, you know, lots of folks, young folks, once they get educated, leave the state. We have this brain drain problem that we've been talking about for well, years. Well, we're hoping that that's not the case going forward, that yep. more of our uh, students decide to stay uh, in the communities. But we see our campuses as destination points. Uh, we think that they are cultural destinations, they are destinations right. for the uh, community uh, as community centers. So uh, our campus is uh, our bright spot in every community where right. we, we have uh, uh, our location. All right, we're going to run to a break, and then when we come back, I want, I want to talk a little bit about, from your perspective, given what you do, 
you know, uh, the unions are all going to end up in a very, very tough, you know, unions and managements, it's going to be a very tough situation for everybody. And you get your sort of general impressions about how all of that goes. We just had a big debate over pensions, as you know, how to fund pensions. A lot of state system employees are in SCRS, that's the state employee pension system. A huge deal was just, you know, concluded in the state legislature to, uh, uh, well, in effect, try to deal with at least part of the pension problem. We're talking with Gary Dent. We'll be back after talking about bills after we pay some bills. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by the Pennsylvania Chamber of Business and Industry, the statewide voice of business, and by the Pennsylvania Cyber Charter School, bringing educational innovation and freedom to the children of Pennsylvania. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by PAConstructionJobs.com. For more information about rewarding careers in the highway construction industry, visit PAConstructionJobs.com. And by the Pennsylvania Manufacturers Association. Business in Pennsylvania is our business. Hi, I'm, uh, I'm chatting here with Gary Dent. Uh, he's a uh, vice chancellor with the State System of Higher Education, the public universities in this state. Think Kutztown, Clarion, Cheney, IUP. You know all those. We got. We won't go through all the <laughs> names. I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure you could. Look, uh, before we get into sort of relationship with employees as we move forward, what do you think students and families need to get a sense about as we enter this new sort of fiscal reality? where universities, you know, colleges and universities are concerned. Yeah. Well, I'm hoping that what they see in us is a, a caring organization, mm -hmm. that we really care about the uh, outcome of the state and our local communities, that um, uh, our employees are, are just a great group of mm -hmm. people, that uh, every day when I visit a campus uh, across the state, I see hardworking men and women right. who really support yeah. the, the notion that we should provide uh, great education uh, and we have a great chancellor too. I, I, I can say that in my 16 months I have a greater appreciation for his dedication mm -hmm. to the uh, Pennsylvania State System of Higher Education and, uh, and assuring uh, everyone that he works hard every day yeah. to make it a great system. Yeah, one of the things that I, I think that may become more evident in these tough fiscal times is that the state system universities draw lots of folks from their own region. Now, you know, there's a lot of outreach to try to get people internationally and yes. all over the country. But not only, I mean, I'm going to ask you this question. Do, do you think that not only are they engines of economic importance to their communities, but lots of folks who attend school, you know, many, you know, part-time folks who have families who are working, you know, in the community have, have made these, you know, really regional universities attracting students you know, from areas where you can commute pretty easily. I mean, that's fairly important as we try to improve the quality of the workforce. And go ahead. Well, it, it's important that we attract people from within the region and uh, students from within right. the region. But we we are a great source uh, of attracting business. Yep, and that's so, a good point. Uh, we, we assist the region in employment, and uh, and it's an ongoing development uh, that occurs with our universities that we just don't stop after the. Yeah four-year degree right. that they come back and they see yeah. other uh, And you have a lot of sort of vocational and professional programs as well that continue I mean lots of lots of in the public health field lots of in computer technology I mean things that we typically think of the four-year degree and we're not going to under you know downplay that that's hugely important but public universities are also access points not just for first year you know folks who haven't gone in their family still a lot of first time graduates, right? Yes, but continuing education yeah, is a ahead. very important uh, aspect of what we do. Uh, so when, uh, when we just think of a university as a place to get a four-year degree, I think we yeah. uh, understate the importance of the uh, university. Uh, and I mentioned earlier, uh, in my uh, 16 months here, I visited all of our 14 universities. Right. I typically go in uh, the day before, walk the community, get to know the people. Mm -hmm. Uh, talk about their issues and concerns, meet our students, talk to our faculty members and staff about the issues that are on right. their minds. And right. it's just a great you know, opportunity yeah. for me to learn. But they say things like, this is a place where I can 
uh, learn uh, or have uh, an opportunity to visit cultural events or right. plays. Right. Uh, they, they talk about the friendliness of our students in the community that you hear all this negative sometimes about students being rowdy. I, I've not seen that. <laughs> uh, um, now, I, I do think that our students, students do have fun. Students can be students. Yes. Yeah, you know, we all know that, right? Yes, students that's right. can be students. But that's yeah. part of the student experience. I got it. I so got I, it. I would never uh, push away from that. But uh, I also note that there's um, huge collaboration yeah. you know, across the universities and within the community. We yeah. want to promote more of that's, that. That's a great point. Before I let you go, uh, I, I, we, you know, we won't get into this too deeply for obvious reasons. You know, lots of negotiations coming up. I mean, this is not going to be an easy time, I think, for, you know, for either for, for the unions or for management in these negotiations, is it the tough, tough, tough economic times here? Well, the economic times will be tough, and it's going to be one of the major topics that we'll have to talk about. Right. But but let me say this: uh, I, I believe strongly that um, that good people come together and think about interests. Right. You know, and our interest is totally focused on student success. Uh, I care deeply about our employees, mm -hmm. faculty, and staff, mm -hmm. and so we want to sit down, and we will sit down and right. have good conversations about uh, interest. Uh, and then we look for options and ways to meet sure. everyone's interest. Okay, well, look, thanks uh, uh, for coming on. We're going to have your boss, the chancellor, on in a couple of weeks. He's going to come in here, and we're going to chat a little bit about the direction in another way. All right, Governor Corbett, energy, I don't think you can talk about a bigger subject right now. Marcella Shale, electric dereg deregulation, it's all going on in our state. Terry Fitzpatrick, a, uh, a former public utility commissioner, is on board and he will be on following these words. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is brought to you by Pennsylvania Credit Union Association. Pennsylvania Credit Unions, where people are worth more than money. To find a credit union that is right for you, check out ibelong.org and by the Energy Association of Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania's energy information source. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by the State System of Higher Education, 14 state-owned universities. The State System is the largest provider of higher education in Pennsylvania and by the Hospital and Health System Association of Pennsylvania, working towards a healthy Pennsylvania. Hi, welcome back to the program. Well, joining me is Terry Fitzpatrick. He's the president uh, of the Energy Association of Pennsylvania. We've been going through this series of governor-elect Tom Corbett. He's chatted and talked a lot during the course of the campaign about what he might do. In a, in a few weeks, he will be uh, governor of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, takes the oath of office on January 18th. Terry Fitzpatrick, welcome to the program. Thank you, Terry. All right, you're our energy expert. Let's sort of, during the course of the campaign, Tom Corbett, you know, talked about energy matters. Uh, what's your take from what you heard Governor-elect Corbett say? Well, f first of all, I think it's important to note that Governor-elect Corbett was elected as part of a, nation, a national trend, really. I think a reaction against big government to some extent, right. a, a desire to get back to basics and to really worry about the economy more than anything else. So I think his energy policy really is in line with that. Um, if you look at the things he said in this platform, he wanted to emphasize building energy infrastructure. Uh, he wanted to rely on markets. And he wanted to promote all of Pennsylvania's energy resources. And that would include uh, natural gas, coal, as well as renewable mm -hmm. energy, which was a big emphasis of the Rendell administration. Right. So what you're saying is you look for a policy of, of government support, not necessarily fiscal support, financial support because of the budget, but perhaps regulatory help and as well an encouragement to develop many of the resor energy resources, the clean coal you know, a little right. sometimes controversial. Yes. But but you think he'll push clean coal, renewable renewable energy. You mentioned electricity. Although right. is that a, something for expansion or just to upgrade uh, the uh, you, you know the uh, generation capacity? What what? what yeah. Uh, well, I think one of the things we'd be talking about was encouraging upgrading the grid. But when right. when it, really some of this goes back to how you generate electricity right. and. 
Uh, one of Governor Rendell's big uh, priorities was to uh, try to always increase the mandates for alternative energy. And I think, I think Governor Corbett is going to try to encourage renewable energy without, without emphasizing the mandates as much. I got it. All right, well, let's talk a little bit about this. Some, let's get down into each one of these categories and see where he goes. Nothing, I think, has been more controversial than this whole business of Marcellus Shale. For, our, for our, the folks out there, uh, talk about Marcellus Shale in general, natural gas, the, the, the breadth of it, the depth of it, in other words. How important is it to the state? It, it's incredibly important. I mean, this is a huge economic development for Pennsylvania to be able to get at this natural gas, which people have known, the experts have known it's down there for years and years. It just wasn't viable to get at it. Right. But now with the processes they have, they can, they can uh, get at this natural gas. And it's, it's really a, an unbelievably positive economic development for the Commonwealth if it's done right. But yeah. everybody, and there's a lot of debate about whether it's being yeah. done right and how you do that. But but you but on that debate you think that's an important debate to have so that it does I mean I think everybody agrees it needs to be done right right it needs to be done safe and there are I think legitimate environmental concerns about water quality I think you would agree with that and is there some process that you think Gov Gov Governor Elect Corbett will set up or to make sure it is done you know so that all of these concerns that people have will be dealt with. His, uh, if, if you look at his platform on his campaign website, he has a lot of information about that and about what he wants oh, to do. Okay. Uh, he, he wants to have name at least a couple of different groups, a scientific advisory group to give uh -huh. him the best scientific okay. advice on how to go about this. Uh, he also wants to have roundtables, he, he said, in the regions where the people are affected by uh -huh. this to allow them to express their concerns and to take that into account as he forms uh, his policies towards it. All right, now uh, we're going to go to break, but bef before we do that, there's also, an, I think, an important local government consideration as, you know, not arguably substantial rigs and, you know, there'll, there'll be some amount of, of uh, concern about roads and the infrastructure as well as security. And, uh, and so there is a legitimate local government, you know, local government officials have a legitimate concern about right. the cost that could accrue to them, correct? Correct. That's correct. So, so we have the environment, we have the local government concern, we have the taxes. I want to get into that after the break. But you think he's going to take a more holistic approach to it that will include lots of the elements. And he did talk about the environment. I mean, he over and over said this has to be done safely. Right. Well, it's, it's always a balance. And if you, Governor Rendell would talk about a balance too. But I think Governor Corbett is going to He's going to emphasize more a concern about the cost of energy and, and, like I said, less big government, less government okay. mandates for particular forms of energy. All right. We're talking with Terry Fitzpatrick from the Energy Association. I want to, I want to get into electric rate caps. It's something that we've talked about from time to time. We all care about that. We get that electric bill. You want to make sure it's not too high. We'll be back in a moment. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by... Highmark Blue Shield, changing the way health plans work for business with a variety of plan options for employers and more choices for employees. Information is available at Highmark.com. Have a greater hand in your company's health. And by the Pennsylvania Healthcare Association, the future of long-term care. Okay, now we're going to talk about your energy bill. Now, this will get your attention, right, right, right. Terry? This That's will right. get everybody's attention on this energy. Bring us an update on this. It's been some time since you and I chatted. Right. Uh, we have deregulation. It will now go into effect. Is it this next year for the folks in PICO? Well, go yes, ahead. It's, it's, Jan January 1st for, uh, for customers of PICO. But really, throughout the state, it's been... Uh, yeah. coming about at different times for different sure. people. For PPL customers, their rate caps came off last January. Mm -hmm. uh, for the Duquesne Light territory in Pittsburgh, they came off uh, back around 2002. So it's at different times. But next this January, for PICO customers, for MedEd customers, Penelac customers, West Penn Power customers, the rate caps come off, and their, what they pay for electricity will then go to a market price. Yeah. So, so the takeaway for are the folks out there watching right. is that when they have the deregulation, they can sign up. You know, there are all sorts of people competing. They're going to get all sorts of information, correct? Right. Correct. And you're going to have some advice for them, right? Yes. The advice is shop. Be a good consumer good of electricity. Uh, yeah. Probably the best place to start is the PUC's website. 
Uh, he used to be a little Correct. bit involved in that at one point P-U-C. in his life. PUC.state.pa.us, and that will give you uh, access to a power switch website where you can see the prices that all the different competitors are offering and compare that to your price to compare from the utility and decide whether it's worthwhile for you to switch. Uh, that's one thing you can do. Of course, the other thing you can do, the cheapest, as they say, the cheapest kilowatt of electricity yeah. is the one you never use. So you yeah. might want to look at conservation. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of things out there now. The, the utilities are all uh, pushing conservation programs, uh, compact fluorescent bulbs, right. those, those sorts of things to allow you to get your electricity bill down by reducing your usage as well. All right. Now, even if you have selected, let's say, an alternative uh, supplier other than, the, let's say, P PPL or, right. or PICO, let's, every year or so, would you tell consumers, our viewers, that they should reevaluate, re re-examine the existing arrangement they have and shop every year or two depending on what their contract is with the provider, you know, that they've, that they've added, you know, since deregulation? Yeah, I, I think that you, well, you just said what the key is, I think, Terry. There's a variety of different kinds of deals. If, if your real priority is locking in a price for even a multi-year period, yeah. there are some of those products out there. But every time, if you have basically a one-year deal or if the price you have uh, it, uh, with your competitive supplier goes for a year, mm -hmm. yes, as that's coming up to, to expire, you ought to look around and see whether that's still the best deal or whether you ought to go with some other supplier. Yeah. Now, one of the things that, you know, you and I, I, th I, you know, we talked about this when you were a commissioner and, 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 you know, subsequent to, you know, your new assignment here. And competition in Pennsylvania is now really at a fairly substantial level, right? And you assumed when we went to deregulation at that. So people do have meaningful choices. Is that is, Go ahead. That's correct. And it, you can see that by looking at the PPL territory, where over half of the electric load of PPL is now shopping. People aren't buying it from PPL. They're buying it yeah. from competitive uh, suppliers. So, uh, yes, the market is, is, is taking off. Um, it, it, it will expand, I think, over time. I think a lot of customers are reluctant to make that change, but there's been a great education mm -hmm. effort by both the PUC and by PPL to get customers more comfortable shopping. Yeah. And it's not, I mean, <clears throat> it is fairly complicated, and, and people do have to get control of that. And <clears throat> as you know, electric bills are, I mean, electric bills are, uh, uh, for some people, a very significant part of their budget. That's correct. I mean, and they're going to have to get a handle on it. Well, look, you keep us updated. You know, come back, and we can talk about some other aspects, maybe lie heap, you know, the programming. Uh, we've got lots of things to talk about. All right, we'll see you next week for another edition. And as always, stay well.